Welcome. These are the key steps to starting non-invasive ventilation on most patients. First of all, mask fit. Mask fit is important as most hospitals will carry full face mask. It should cover the lateral edges of the lips and it should sit on the chin itself, not at the lip line and not below the chin. Just make sure the mask fit is appropriate. The next thing to do is to have a look at the ABG. It's important that we look at the ABG prior to starting, if possible, the non-invasive ventilation, as this will help us assess whether to focus on going up on the PEEP or going up on the PC or going up on the pressure support. Now, if your O2 is an issue, your PEEP needs to be your focus. If your PCO2 is an issue, then your pressure support differential needs to be uh, the issue. Now, the pressure support differential is the pressure support minus the PEEP. If a patient is uncomfortable or resistant to starting non-invasive ventilation, it's best then to apply the mask to the face without the straps on with a pressure support between 5 to 7 centimeters of water with a PEEP of 0. So you start off with a pressure support of 5 to 7 with a PEEP of 0 and this will help the patient acclimatize to it. Then you gradually introduce the PEEP after three to four breath cycles by going up by one to two centimeters of water and keep communicating with the patient if they feel better or they feel more assured right now. If you have no problems, then go ahead and strap on the mask firmly and start the pressure support and PEEP. And the default settings generally have always been around 10 and 5, but this will change from patient to patient. But you can always default to that with a, pressure, with a setting of 100% FiO2. Next, keep communicating with the patient. You need to keep talking to the patient. When you do communicate and you talk to the patient, you figure out whether they're feeling better with the pressure spot or the PEEP uh, being applied to. Now, go ahead and increase the PEEP in situations where you're dealing with an O2 problem. You may increase the PEEP by one to two centimeters of water in COPD patients, CHF patients, patients with other hypoxic respiratory problems, and keep the pressure support differential between five, five and seven centimeters of water. Reassess the work of breathing. You should be able to tell by looking at the respiratory rate, which should improve and go down, less use of accessory respiratory muscles, and less use of abdominal muscles as well as the patient receives adequate oxygenation and ventilation through the non-invasive ventilator. When a patient doesn't feel the benefit or feel smothered by increasing PEEP, then maintain the previous level of PEEP. Increasing pressure support by 1 or 2 centimeters works in most patients, especially those who have hypercapnic respiratory problems, so high PCO2, patients that come in with COPD exacerbations uh, with a low pH and a high CO2, patients as well with neuromuscular weakness. So neuromuscular weakness is another issue as well, which responds really well to non-invasive ventilation. You may increase the pressure support differential uh, by one to two centimeters of water, but you should not go above 10 to 12 pressure support differential. It's best to calculate the ideal body weight in most of these patients as it will help guide the pressure support differential and the tidal volumes targeted. You do not need to hyperventilate these patients. Gradual decline in PCO2 levels is preferred unless, of course, patient's mental status is a, is a major source of concern. At this point, the non-invasive ventilator may not be the best way to go. Now, the way to calculate the ideal body weight for females is by looking at their height. Now, the calculation is 45.5 plus 2.3 multiplied by the number of inches above 60 inches. So if a patient is 5 feet 2 inches, it is 2 times 2.3, and that will roughly equal 4.6. You add that to 45.5, that will give you a rough number of 51. You may just round it up to 50 kilos. For a male patient, it's the exact same calculation except it's 50 plus 2.3 multiplied by the number of inches above 60 inches or 5 feet. Now, if leak is an issue, tighten the mask and consider the mask change if the face fit is an issue. Increased PEEP may lead to leaks to occur more frequently. If stable, get an ABG after 30 to 60 minutes. Now, I wouldn't 
request that you f wait 30, 60 minutes if the patient doesn't look like they're tolerating the non-invasive ventilator. Please note as well, as patients' breathing mechanics improve with medical treatment, the pressure support and the PEEP needs may need readjustment. So I advise you that the patient may become more intolerant to CPAP or BiPAP as the patient's medical condition improves. So take note of that. Thank you.